One of my most cherished memories is um, the mom came in to place her order after their senior pictures. The daughter couldn't come with and she was um, coming separate and the mom was there first. And she says, I have to tell you, she says, when we left the session, she says, I looked over and my daughter was crying. And she says, crying? I'm like, oh, she goes, oh my gosh, what happened? She goes, she goes, that is the first time I've ever felt beautiful. Hey, Annie, welcome to the portrait system. How are you? I'm great. Thank you, Nikki. It's so, I'm so glad to have you here. You actually, if you're <laughs> listening, you may recognize Annie's voice because she was featured in two different clubhouse chats that, um, that you did one with me and one with Ashley and Kevin. Yep. Absolutely. I was on the senior marketing. Yep. They're probably not recognizing my voice, but my crazy Minnesota accent. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got my Michigan one, so we're oh, pretty you're close. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So if you're watching this, this is one of the episodes that we have on YouTube. I am my, Annie has a really nice background. Mine is not so nice because I am in a closet in my new house because we have <laughs> super tall ceilings in the rest of the house and it does not work well for sound and sound I know is incredibly important. Have you ever listened to a podcast where the sound is terrible, Annie? Absolutely. I've heard echoey, I've heard muffly and it's annoying. Yeah. I turn it <laughs> off right away. I can't handle yeah, it. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so yeah, we put uh, sound in front of background. So <laughs> anyway, okay, so let's get started, Annie. I know that you are an incredibly successful high school senior photographer, and I'm, so, I'm excited to hear your story. I know you've given some really good marketing tips and, and everything on the Clubhouse chats, but it, mm -hmm. it'll be good just to hear you know, how you built your business and how you run it. So yeah. let's start. Have you always, I know you've been a photographer for, for quite a while. Did you yep. always photograph seniors? No, I didn't. Um, I've been doing photography professionally for 27 years, oh, wow. um, and I have... My journey is like a whole compilation of different chapters. I've probably been where everybody is at least once. Mm. Um, I've worked out of, I started out of my home in Miami. Um, we moved there um, after I lived in Guatemala. We moved to Miami and oh, I wow. wanted to start my own business because I'm just, I'm the type of person that loved to just do my own thing. So I knew photography was it. So I kind of jumped off a cliff knowing nothing about running a business didn't take a business <laughs> class in college because to me, business meant sitting behind a desk, which I didn't want to do. So I just started and um, I had no fear and I just knew it would work out. So I opened um, my business in my home because I didn't know Miami. I didn't know any people. I didn't really know technically photography that well. I played around with it. My dad was a photographer, so I grew up around it, but I never did it professionally. So I started out small in my home, and then after about a year and a half, a couple of years of growing my clientele, I decided to get a bigger studio. So I rented a studio in a really cool area of Miami called South Miami, and my my work my workload or my client tripled like within like two months. It just flourished. Yeah. I was like busy. They don't really have a slow season there. Maybe September because school starting, but it was busy constantly. And I decided to concentrate on children and families because seniors wasn't a thing in Miami. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I decided to concentrate on children and family and I wanted to do it more artfully. Um, so I did it the black and white hand colored and that was my specialty. Wow. I also worked with color, but um, the hand painted black and white was my specialty, which I loved. And uh, so I worked in Miami for eight years. And then um, after a divorce, I was going to be moving to Minnesota with my kids. So I sold my business in Miami to a client. And wow. she wanted to start doing senior portraits because we had talked about it. She had a daughter in high school. She says, I'm going to start senior portraits. So uh, she wasn't able to get it to work either. But as soon as I moved to Minnesota, I came up here in 2001. And right after... I started, I opened my studio in September and of course that was 9-11. So, uh, so um, things kind of started slowly, which I preferred. I wanted to kind of start slowly, but I was really excited to work with seniors. And unfortunately in Minnesota, the season to photograph seniors is like June through September, October. So yeah, I kind of missed that first season. I, I probably had like maybe three seniors that first year, but I was prepared the next year. And 
So I concentrated on seniors and still families and children. I let go of weddings, which I didn't enjoy that I did in Miami and uh, just started building my, my, uh, my studio from 2001, my senior business. Okay. Okay. And when you started that business, did you have a studio where you were at? Yeah. In, yep. Okay. Yeah. When I moved to Minnesota, I, I found this really cute little Victorian house in a cute okay. little lake town. That's a suburb of Minneapolis on Lake Minnetonka. If anyone knows um, anything about Minnesota, but it's a great mm -hmm. spot and it's, it's got a lot of big, uh, towns around it that are suburbs of Minneapolis, a lot of big public schools that I could pull my clients from and my, my seniors from. So I had a cute little studio, very small shooting room because it was an old Victorian house. So it, it was really, mm -hmm. really tight quarters, but I decided I loved it so much. I wanted to make it work because it was so cute, but the shooting room, I think the ceilings were only like seven and a half feet. So by the time you had a background rollers and, and lights that, you know, if you had a tall family, you know, someone that was over six feet, they were, you know, they were less than a foot from the ceiling. Yeah, so, yeah. so I made that work for about eight years. And then I decided to move into a bigger studio just down the street in the same town. Now you had employees for a while, right? I did. I did. After about a year after I moved here, um, I grew my business enough that I felt I needed someone to do my sales for me because I did not enjoy sales. That was just the one thing that I don't <laughs> like asking for money, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. so I did have someone do sales for me in Miami. And then when I moved here, I just wasn't busy enough to, to need someone. So after about a year, I hired um, a wonderful lady that uh, was a client of mine and she did my sales for me. And, and I always tell people, that if there's something in your business that you don't enjoy doing or is taking up your time, you need to hire it out, whether it's, yeah. whether it's sales or whether it's marketing or retouching. Sometimes we just can't do it all. And I'm the yeah. kind of person that I want to do it all. And right now I am doing it all, but you know, I've been around for a long time, but back then I just didn't enjoy sales. And I figured yeah. someone else, it's easier for someone else to say, Oh my gosh, isn't this photo amazing. Cause I can't say that about my own pictures. That sounds like really mm -hmm. weird. So, so yeah, so I hired uh, one woman on and then eventually when I moved to my bigger studio, I had two women that worked okay. with me and sales. Now, do you do your own sales now? now I do. Yep, yeah, I do. Okay. Cause I had a big business overhaul about seven years ago. The, the overhead in the place I was was really high and plus mm -hmm. two employees. I was having, especially being such a seasonal place, I was doing four to five seniors a day, oh full sessions. Gosh, wow. And then I would come home and I would have to call through them and edit through them every night because if I skipped a night, then the next day I would have like 10 sessions to go through. Mm -hmm. I was working weekends and evenings and, and I just said that was, that was enough. I wanted to work smarter. And so I decided to let go of my, my big studio and my employees in lieu of, of a studio share mm -hmm. and working on location. Most of the senior portraits here are outdoors anyway. And so I did the studio share thing and then I went back to doing my own sales. But then by then I had the confidence and the experience to do so. Right. Yeah. So no. I do that now. We have so much to cover, but really quickly <laughs> for if someone out there wanted to outsource you know, the selling to someone else. Mm -hmm. How did you do that? Like, was it a, a profit share? Was it an hourly wage? How did you, how did you pay that person? I, I paid them hourly and you know, it's probably good to, you can set it up where they can maybe get a percentage of their sales, but I don't like math and I didn't want to have to sit and figure out all that those technical mm -hmm. stuff. So I just paid them hourly and yeah, okay. they did a great job for me. So I didn't feel like I needed to give them an incentive for sales. Yeah. Um, but, but, or you could maybe give an incentive for the large products like the folio right. boxes or the albums or the large galleries wraps or yeah. something. But, um, but yeah, hourly was, was the way that I did. I paid them. So, okay. And then the other thing that I just wanted to quick comment on is, you know, you said you went from having two employees, a huge studio, you downsized, mm -hmm. Yeah. And let go and, and you don't have employees anymore. And I'm, I just want people to understand that having a bigger business and bigger studio and more employees doesn't necessarily mean better for you. No. It, it works no. great for some people, but that doesn't, 
define whether or not your business is successful. So I just kind of wanted to throw that out there. Yeah. And success isn't always how much money you make because I don't, I didn't necessarily make more money because my overhead was so high. Right. So I probably make more money now. Plus for me, a big part of my decision was because I wanted to give more of a personalized experience to each of my clients because Mm. doing five clients a day and then shoveling them off to my employees to do the sales Mm -hmm. and and all the other things after that, I felt I didn't have that personalized experience with my clients. I saw them for the session and that was about it. And so Mm -hmm. I really wanted to personalize it for them for not only for my senior clients, but for my other portrait clients as well. And so that was a a big catalyst for me to downsize. So I could spend that time, you know, one-on-one with them. Right. Right. Yeah. Now talk us through how you run your sessions. So you you said mostly outdoors and Mm -hmm. that sort of thing, but do you allow multiple outfits? Do you include hair and makeup? Like how does that whole session work as a high school senior? For high school seniors specifically, I have two sessions that I offer. I offer what I call just my creative Mm -hmm. And that one is three outfits changes. Okay. Um, I find out any more and girls can bring a fourth and I'll, I'll definitely photograph it. But guys usually are like, oh my God, I have to change three times. <laughs> but they, totally. they usually do pretty good because I like to offer a variety within my sessions. So I usually, I have that one at three. That's the basic session. And then I have one I call the elite. And that one just adds hair and makeup and an extra outfit. Because here, not a lot of, not a lot of girls necessarily want. I don't want to force the girls to have hair and makeup, even though it looks great and it's great for editing after for the post, but Mm -hmm. I don't, it's not something I want to force on people. So I want them to be able to have it if they want it. So I do have a lot of girls that still, still do the hair and makeup and then they get an extra outfit. So, so then we choose a location and I have a few locations that I love to shoot at. Basically the, the two main ones are either if they're nature oriented kids or if they're more urban oriented. Mm -hmm. And then within each location, I have a lot of variety within that location. So depending on the outfits they bring, we kind of match the, the, the area of our location to their outfits. And then we, and then we photograph and have a great time. And, um, and then after that, I offer different ways to do the sales. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, it sounds like you keep it pretty simple. I mean, it doesn't. Yeah. I've learned to keep it simple. Yeah. Okay. So now do you offer both in studio and on location as options Mm -hmm. during the same shoot? I do. I do. Um, Okay. So the last month and a half, I had another change. I, when I did my studio share, that was in another part of the city was in kind of an old industrial area of Minneapolis that was, had a lot of character, but that I shared that with six other photographers and Mm -hmm. And then I also had another space close to my home where I met with clients because that one I couldn't put my photos up. I couldn't have my all my product. So I wanted another space to meet with clients. I could have my my TV and my all my product. And that had a little porch where I had all my I have like hundreds of gowns for my style closet and it doesn't all fit in my home. So I had a room there to put all my gowns for my style closet and a small little space to do some shoots and and so what I did was about early May, I can put those two together and I got a new studio that's literally across the street from my house. It's, it's a studio oh, nice. apartment that I converted into a studio and, right. and I love it because it's all mine. I, the studio share was great because I went from having to pay $3,000 a month in rent to 200 So the studio share was wonderful for a while, but I'm at the point where I need to be able to have my space and, Mm -hmm. and I feel like I can serve my clients so much better because I have my refrigerator there. I can offer them something to drink. I have snacks if they're coming back home from or back from school and, and I have all of my style closet there for my teens and my, my clients, my lights are set up and all my portraits are on the wall. So it's made a huge difference. So now I can offer the studio along with the the location that's around here that that gives the lake and the flower gardens and some urban because mm-hmm. there's a little town here and and it's perfect. So I let kids choose. Yeah. Yeah. I love offering awesome. that now. So and then let's real quick let's jump to pricing and then I want to go back to marketing and just how you built this mm-hmm. whole thing but let's jump to pricing and and tell me how your your pricing model works. 
Yeah, I used to do collections for 20 years. I did collections. And when I did my business overhaul seven years ago, I said, I, because I, my, I have a lot of products and I, Mm -hmm. and I've even scaled down, but, but I offer like albums and folio boxes and keepsake boxes and all the wall galleries and prints. And so I was getting, um, I felt like the clients were um, having to feel like they were putting in forced to get into a collection. You know, I felt yeah. uncomfortable with that because I was always switching and everything. So I wanted to do a la carte. And so I decided mm-hmm. to do a minimum order. And, um, and so after the session, I would get a deposit of $600 and then that would go towards their order. And then they would come in to view their orders, their pictures, or I also started Zoom shares mm-hmm. um, because I didn't have a place at that time because I'd had that studio share. And that yeah. was before yeah. I had my other place where I would, um, I wouldn't have a place to, to meet with them. So I would do the Zoom, the Zoom shares and go over their orders with them there. But um, so I do a la carte and then they get the bonuses for what they purchase. Instead of doing collections and having the discount, oh, I do right. a bonus. Like if they spend a certain amount, then they, they can earn digital or they can earn money towards more product. And I found that I love that even more because it doesn't cap it. Like when you have a, sometimes when you have a, have a collection, they say, okay, I'll take that collection and then they're done. So when you do all the cards, they just kind of keep, they can keep adding to it. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. So coming in, they have to spend that $600 up front and then Mm -hmm. that is applied. Right. Towards their order. And then how much is it per photo or? Yeah, you know, it's, you, yep, it? it's per photo. Like if they're going to, they can get like here in Minnesota, it's really popular to get five by sevens and eight by tens for family members. Right. So then they just buy those a la carte. Like my five by sevens are 65. They're not matted or anything, or they can get, um, and then if they get 16 by 20 or larger, I, I, they get earn the digital file for that print. Cause okay. that's trying to, I'm trying to push them up to larger wall sales. So so then they can get their digital file. My biggest sales are my folio boxes and my albums with my seniors. So, so that's really fun because then they can get like 20, 30 images right. and their, and their digitals too. So, and then I do the digitals as an upsell for my albums, folio okay. boxes, obviously they're included. Right. Okay. And then how do you charge for albums and folio boxes? So the folio boxes, if they are, do you want like specific prices? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Let me grab my price guide. Yeah. Yep. So folio boxes, since they come with the digitals, obviously are a higher price point up front. Mm-hmm. And those I sell 10 and 20, 12 and 20 images. Okay. And um, I have that Rahar. So they can do a package. It's not like it's they just. They can. I mean, and I do have one collection that is like $4,000, you know? So, yeah. I mean, that's like, I call it my dream collection. So if they want yeah. that, that's got a whole bunch of goodies in it. Okay. Um, and they can kind of make their own collection, basically. Right. Um, so my 8 by 10, 12 images are 1800 for my image boxes okay. or my folio boxes and 2500 for my 20 image. And I don't sell a lot of the large 11 by 14s. I find those are a little bit too big for my clients. They, they tend to love the, the, the smaller yeah. ones. I like and that. I sell a lot of those, those are, in, those include the, the digital files. And okay. then for albums, I have a base album of 20 images and, and that's 1500 for the smaller size, which is eight by 10 and 10 by 10. And mm-hmm. then 1800 for the, the 12 by 12 or nine by 12s. And then, okay. then I have add-ons from that where they can add an image for $60. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times they want more than 20 images. So every image they add, it just adds, they add to that. And then I sell the digital bundle for 600. So they get all the images in their album. They can add that $600 on. And, and it's a good, since they're all edited anyway, I'd rather just sell them the, the digital files too. Yeah. And then yeah. you know, the sale gets up there. Do you know what your sales average is for seniors? Yeah, yeah. And and I have it actually um, because I do, they can order in person, come and do in-person sales, or they can do it through Zoom calls. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of have that like split out. So my um, my in-person sales is 2,600. Um, okay. And then my Zoom sales is 2,380. 
Okay. And then I actually get clients that email me their sale, their what they want, and that's 1960. Okay. So so my my I get Interesting. A, yeah, so I get emails emails people will will you know give me their order over email and it's almost two thousand dollars for that order just because maybe they live far away or they're just really busy and mm-hmm. a lot of times those are repeat clients that know my products and everything. Right, so right. um so yeah so I would love to have it up higher and I'm working towards that. But that's a um, very good very yeah. good average though. Yeah I mean, so that's- it's around twenty six hundred, twenty five hundred. Yeah, that's a really great average. It's interesting yeah. how if you don't do it in person, or although are they seeing the photos, the people who are emailing you, are they seeing the photos with you or no, you're just emailing no. them a link? I they can they can see an online gallery. They get a choice to come okay. in and view the images with me and do an in-person order, or they can leave their six hundred dollar deposit and I'll put an online gallery up. Because okay. kids kids and parents are so busy. You know, it's yeah, so hard for yeah. them to get back in sometime. Or I, I pull from schools that are pretty far away as well. And so sometimes it's just hard for them to travel back to, to yeah. sit down with me. And I found that my Zoom sales, I would get three, four, five. Like, I think my biggest senior order was through a Zoom call. So I found yeah. that when I started doing the Zoom calls, my I was so afraid my sales averages were going to go down and they actually went up. Yeah. So I yeah. felt I did a lot. I do a lot of pre, not pre-selling, but pre-preparation mm-hmm. through the whole process. So by the time they see their images, they they know what the products are and they kind of know what they're going to get. Um, so so I think that helps to get the bigger sales when you're doing Zoom calls, when you don't have the products for them to feel and touch. And obviously that's, that's optimal, but it's mm-hmm. not practical all the time. So, yeah, yeah. and then I have a pretty big, like my product guide is pretty big, you know, and I've got like big photos of all the, the products. Okay. So, yeah, so yeah. they get this and so they, they see the products big. And so, um, I think yeah, that, that kind of helps. Great. That's yeah. great. I love that you do that sort of, you know, like a, a magazine almost to yeah, show it's people. A, it's a yeah. six, I don't even know how many page catalog it is. Probably like 20. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's great. Very cool. Okay, so then let's talk about how you get these seniors in the door, because what I find just from, you know, in the Sue Rice Education Facebook group and just often I hear this from people is how like a senior market, like how do you get these teens in the door? And I'm wondering too, if, if it has evolved for you, because I know you've been doing this for a while yeah. from now yeah. that social media is a big thing. And so talk to me yeah. about all that. Well, I mean, I can talk from a perspective of people just starting out and a perspective of being established because, you know, there's different ways to find people. But being established, obviously, I have a name in some of the schools and and get repeat clients because a lot of people have like multiple kids. So a lot of my clients mm-hmm. are repeat clients. I actually have a lot of seniors. Now I've been here long enough that, that I did their baby pictures, you know? Oh, so yeah. every year, if I have a senior that I worked with when they were babies, I have them bring a photo that I took of them and I have them hold That's it. Cool. So I do some fun things with that. But, um, but a lot of it is word of mouth and, um, just constantly being on right now it's Instagram is the place to, to, to approach seniors, not approach them, but to, to get your name out in front of seniors. A lot of times they, they know friends like juniors are, are friends with seniors. So they'll, Mm -hmm. the next class will see them. So, um, Facebook is a great place to get the mothers and the parents. So I I work both Facebook and I should work Facebook more, but Instagram, I put a lot of energy in to, to get my seniors. And I have a separate Instagram account for my seniors than I do my regular portraits because they look very different and and it's a very different kind of language you speak to seniors than you do Mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. and I don't think my seniors want to see babies in their feed and and stuff so (laughs) um I think if you have a smaller studio if you don't have you know if you kind of do a lot of things um it's better to to separate them but um so that's like the the biggest part and if, if you're starting out I would try to find like a neighbor or like someone that you know that has anyone in the teenage years. I I do Mm -hmm. a model crew that I keep pretty simple and pretty small, but I do take girls from ninth grade to to seniors. And so that gets my name out there to the younger crowd and they're showing their pictures to their friends. And so my name is in their brain since the whole high school. So a lot of times the girls will know way before their senior year who they're going to go to for their their photos. And so um, I think it's really important to get your name out there to the younger crowd. And if you're just starting out, find 
you know, kids that are in clubs like dance or um, just different groups that have like-minded people and just, you know, do some photos and get started on Instagram and Facebook. And, and, and it's really good when clients like the parents or the kids are talking to their friends because that's more organic, you know, than, Mm -hmm. than, you know, other types of advertising. And, right, right. Um, agreed, agreed. That referral yeah, base is so yeah. awesome. You said model crew. Yeah. Talk to, t- tell me model, about. The yeah, it's like crew. a rep program. And what I do is I, I keep it pretty small. Um, some people like to have a large one and I keep it small because I probably don't need to have a model crew. I fill up my summers um, anyway. So I, I like to keep it simple, but by the spring, I am just ready to get out there and photograph, you know, and everything's yeah, blooming. Yeah. So pretty. It's probably the same in Michigan where all yeah. these blooms are pretty and it's before senior season. So, um, and I want to have images to start posting on Instagram, some content that I can start posting when pe- kids are starting to think about, um, booking their senior pictures. So, so I get about 10 girls anywhere from ninth grade to incoming seniors that want to be on my model crew. And what I do is it's $200 for our participation fee. And I keep it low just because I want to cover my cost. If I have to buy, you know, outfits or hit up the goodwill and a little bit of time. And so what I do is they, they, I choose a different location for each session. So I have a variety, like I'll have some urban looks. I'll have some, a girl on a beach and, you know, something more nature oriented in studio. So each girl Mm -hmm. gets a different location and I have them bring one or two outfits because sometimes that, and then I style a couple outfits because I love, I'm just obsessed with styling Mm -hmm. these portraits. So in in sessions, so, so they probably don't necessarily are going to like what I style them in. It might not be their style. So they're more hesitant to share those, but they'll share the ones in a cute little sundress that they bring or something that they're comfortable in. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And so, so what we do is we pick that location and I'll do three, about three different outfits in the spring with each girl. And then I send them a, probably about three to five images from that session. Okay. And I don't send any more because I want them to earn more. They have to work mm. at it. They have to post and share. And then the more they post and share, then they can pick. I send them a gallery. It's got from through my website and it's, um, got a big watermark on it so they can't take them, but they can see all their pictures and then they fall in love with a couple. And I'm like, yeah, if you start sharing what I sent you, then I'll send you those. So that kind of uh, motivates them to to share. And the moms share probably more than the kids do. The moms are so excited <laughs> about, about their kids. So, um, so that just kind of gets the, gets the ball rolling in the spring and the $200 that they pay goes towards an order. If they want to order anything, from those sessions, mm. $200 okay. is the credit towards that. And then the seniors that I have on my model crew have to also book their senior session at the same time. Okay. And so then I'll have mm-hmm. them in the summer. So that's a good way to get a client too. Yeah, it's, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But I keep mine small and I keep it at about 10 girls just because, you know, it gets to be too much. I don't do team, you know, a lot of, a lot of, some of the programs they do um, like team or group pictures mm-hmm. and I don't do those. I just bigger, there's just harder to coordinate and stuff, but, but that works really well for the people that do um, it, that can create a lot of buzz, but I just don't personally do that. I can keep it simple and it's fun to work. I love working with each girl individually and, you know, kind of bring out some, some fun in them and you get them excited to share. Yeah. No, yeah. no, you said that your crew is ninth through 12th grade and I feel mm-hmm. like that's inten- obviously it's intentional, but absolutely. I think sometimes people don't understand that you'd have to start marketing to these kids. You have like, to. Yes. Young. It's not just yes. like, oh, senior session season is starting. Now I start my marketing. Like there's right. so much that goes. Yep. Into yeah. It's it your it's basically Round and and I know people in the south. I think their season is opposite of ours because it's too hot in the summer. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. We just have yearbook deadlines in, uh, in like November, October, so we have to kind of shoot in these months. But it is so important to be in front of these people all year round. Yeah, absolutely. And um, cross, you know, cross promote your seniors with your regular clients and your regular clients with your seniors because your regular clients are going to grow up into seniors. You know, the children right. that you photograph and. And your seniors are, have families, you know, so they need family Mm -hmm. portraits and maybe the moms I'll kind of filter into my, you know, my 50 over 50 campaigns or their mothers or, you know, so I'm constantly cross promoting my different genres that I work with 
And that's let's talk about that that cross promotion because I think yeah. that's really smart, and I think it's something that people forget that can be a really powerful marketing mm-hmm. tool is this cross promotion. Yeah. So how do you how do you incorporate that into your business? Um, well, on my website, I do have my um, genres split up on different tabs. Like I don't have all mm-hmm. my galleries on a gallery tab and all my pricing in a pricing tab. I have my seniors in a tab, my headshots in a tab, my fine art in a tab and my regular portraits in a tab okay. so that each person can go to their tabs. But what I do is in my, um, like on social media, like especially on Instagram, I take both of them. And then what I'll do to every once in a while on my senior Instagram page, I'll say, Hey, go check out my work on my, 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 client page and vice versa. So I'm trying to kind of, you know, put people back and forth and I'm constantly talking Mm -hmm. to people when I talk with them. And if it's a senior who um, maybe they haven't done family portraits in a while, I actually, part of my senior um, package or my session is I allow them to, to add on for free if they want to bring their family or they're just their siblings or something, because that will, that adds on like 15 minutes to the session, but it it totally adds on to the sale at the end. And um, and family like pictures with teenagers isn't as fun as it is with little kids because teenagers don't like to hug and, you know, and I'm like, <laughs> and be close. Of you. I would so much rather. <laughs> oh, do that's so that. funny. <laughs> you know, kids, you can play games and whatever, but, um, so a 15 minute family session is fine. I mean, and I can get a lot of great pictures in 15 minutes and dads probably are like, oh gosh, I have to do this. Mm-hmm, but, um, mm-hmm. but it does definitely add on the sale. And so I'm constantly talking to each genre about what's next. Like if I have a family and they have like a teenager, I'll say, Hey, why don't we do some, you know, tween pictures of your daughter? Mm -hmm. And, and so, you know, I'm just constantly talking about it. I'm not doing any kind of hard sale, but just, you know, putting that little bug in their ear helps. Yeah. 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 What about for the, your 50 over 50 campaign when you're targeting the moms, are you giving any sort of like gift voucher? Are you just telling them about it? How does, how does that work? Um, I started that, um, last year I, I did, I think a Facebook ad for like two days and I got like 40, I think I got 40 women the first two days. So I cut that off and, and I had them all booked and then we had COVID and I listened to that podcast with the, and most of everyone started during COVID. So that all got like postponed all those sessions. By the time we were able to photograph and my hair and makeup artists were actually couldn't work till after I was able to photograph. Right. Um, right. My, my, my summer was booked with seniors, so I couldn't get the ladies until the fall. So I'm still struggling at that, but, but I have, it is amazing how many women will do something like that when they have a purpose. Or when mm-hmm. you give them a reason or they, they just, they want to be a part of that. So like being part of the campaign you right, mean? Like, versus, yeah, yeah. versus mm-hmm. trying to get them to, to do a portrait session for themselves. They, right. they wouldn't do it because women don't want to do things for themselves. They want to do things for their family and they feel guilty. Yeah. But when you give them a purpose, like it's just amazing. I just did this campaign and, and it had a mission to it and women came out of the woodwork. Mm-hmm. So so I started with the, you know, the, the women that I'm photographing and, and they're bringing in their moms, you know, they're like, oh, my mom would love this or mm-hmm. their friends would love it. So, so now I'm just, you know, getting the finalizing it with, with word of mouth and, and people that will see portraits that I'm posting on Facebook or on Instagram, or they see their friends photos. So right now it's word mm-hmm. of mouth. And I'm actually trying to get, I really want to get older women. I would love to get a woman that's a hundred you know? Um, yeah. You know, real quick, just to kind of go back to what you said about, um, people kind of need a reason to do the photos. mm -hmm. So for this, this round of the portrait masters awards and accreditation self portrait is the bonus category. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, this is a perp. Like, you know, doing what we do, we have to have our face on our social media. We have Mm -hmm. to post photos of ourselves, And, even though I'm a photographer and I know this and sometimes it just feels awkward. Like, is my family going to be like, why is she posting well, another? Yeah. Like my cousins are going to be like, Oh my God, here she, no, and no, sorry. If my cousins are listening to this, I love you all. They love you. I mean to like, but you know what I mean? When you're not in the industry and you just yeah. don't, you know, anyway, so because it was self portrait was the bonus. I felt like, Oh, well I have to do self portrait right. because I want to submit. And so I did it. And I did photos of myself. And when I posted on social media, I made sure to say, oh, it was the self-portrait 
you know, category where it makes sense. It's like, oh, I did this because I'm part of a 50 over 50 campaign. Even right. though we do not have to have a reason whatsoever right. to do right. photos of ourselves. We should yep. not like there doesn't need to be just that doesn't need to be justified whatsoever. whatsoever. But when there is a justification, I I love it it truly makes people feel like they can do it. Yeah. Yep. It's sort of like it's sort of like it gives them permission. Yes. To, and it makes them say like it's not it's not a selfish thing anymore. I'm doing mm-hmm. this for a cause or I'm doing this mm-hmm. for a purpose. I'm not doing this for me because I'm selfish. And, you know, and I, and I think that's, it was just blew me away how many women that came out of the woodwork to do this with me and are just so excited about it because of the purpose and the mission for it. And it's amazing. Yeah, it's yeah. just, it's been so rewarding, not only for them, but for myself as well. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. And when you think about it with seniors too, it gives them a reason to do a photo shoot because yeah. I'm graduating from high school. Like yeah. it's a thing. Right. And However, I will tell you, they will not post, uh, they will if they, you know, some of them do, but they have a hard time posting a professional image on their Instagram yes. because yes. they think that it's, people are going to think they're like full of themselves or something. So, yeah. so that really affects how I, how I market my seniors on Instagram, I find that they will repost a story all the time. Yes. So I'm working more towards getting like during a session, doing the behind the scenes and kind of fun mm-hmm. pictures and do more of the stories and the reels. Those they will repost like every time. And, right. but they, it's a senior Sunday is their reason and yep. their, exactly. their um, permission to, to post like a professional photo. Some of them do. Some of them have no problem with it. But 90% of the kids just don't post professional pictures. They want all the crazy, silly stuff on their Instagram feeds. So yeah, yeah. that's so funny. I've had the same experience with with the seniors that I photograph. I don't yeah. photograph a whole lot of seniors anymore, but yeah. You are exactly right. They don't post the ones that unless yeah. it's senior Sunday, because yep. that's a reason. Yeah. Or like if I do the post, then they might share it. Right. You know, not right. even so much the story. They usually share the stories for sure. But yeah. Like if I do a regular post, sometimes they'll share that post. But right. it's so funny how, yeah, that, how it's, it works. It's it's funny. Yeah. You just gotta work with what you know, what what works out there. You have to find out you know, the methods that work and go with them. Mm -hmm. And adding the family portion to senior photos is really smart. And, Mm -hmm. and I started doing that, but it was kind of by accident. Yeah. It was the parent saying like, Hey, you know, we haven't done family photos in a while. Would it be okay if, Mm -hmm. and I'm like, Oh, absolutely. Cause like you said, well, for me personally, I, as much as I love little kids, photographing them is extremely hard and I'm not trying to work hard anymore. I'm trying to work smart. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and photographing teenagers with their parents for me is like it's quick it's fast yeah it, it, it is exactly it's piece of cake it's 20 minutes at the end of the session mm-hmm. and and if you can convince mom to get hair and makeup done too or mm-hmm. moms plural you know what who whoever their the parent is you know the parents are who might want hair and makeup like mm-hmm. now you've you've given them the experience mm-hmm. of the full service Plus, they're going to see how you pose and direct them. So now they've had this experience of being photographed by you as well. Mm -hmm. And then who knows, like when you do any sort of campaign or when they need family photos in the future, or maybe they need headshots or personal branding or whatever that looks like. Now they've experienced a photo shoot with you and you are so much more likely. I always, always sell my biggest package or more when the family comes in because now you've got, they've got to pick just the photos, you know, for the seniors. And of course they're not going to not pick the family photos. Right. So they've got like two sessions in one and you've mm-hmm. only added 15 minutes and not much more work on it. Yeah. And then yeah. the moms are comfortable, they're comfortable with you then. And so when it is time for, like you said, for another type of session, they're going to call you because they've seen your work, they're comfortable with you, you know? So mm-hmm. absolutely. Mm-hmm. It's, mm-hmm. it's been huge to, to add on, or even if just the siblings that come with, you know, then they're making yeah. Christmas cards in the, yep. you know, Christmas time. And, and then you've got your little branding on the back of every one of those cards that goes out. And so yep. it just kind of, yep. it just kind of steamrolls. Yeah. What about Annie for people who are like just trying to get into this whole senior genre mm-hmm. and where, where do they start? Like, do you have like some sort of recipe that you would like, if you were to, okay, let me, let me ask you this. If you were to like start over in a brand new town again, mm-hmm. how would you begin? Well, that's a good way to put that. I would f- um, find some girls in high school, whether that's through someone I know 
um, maybe, um, you know, usually someone you can, you meet people like when you first move to a town or you're first starting out, you know, people that have kids in high school. So I would get a few girls in, invite them into my studio, give them a voucher or invite mm-hmm. them in and just offer them a couple digital files to in, you know, to, to photograph with you. I would photograph them, make them fall in love with you, make them fall in love with the pictures, get your Instagram going, your Facebook up. And I would just start blasting pictures and, and getting them excited about the experience and, and talking to their friends. And, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe you just start out with maybe only doing six to 10 seniors your first year, but then the next year that will double into 20 or 30. And then the next year, maybe you have 60, you know, and, and then you have to know your limit of how many you want. Some people only want to photograph 20, 30 seniors a you know, a year. Right. Um, some people want to photograph hundreds, you know? So right. the best thing is to, to, to know your limits and, and you know, what your, what your workflow is and what your lifestyle is. And obviously the more you can, the higher your sales averages, the less clients you mm-hmm. have to take on. So, mm-hmm. you know, if your sales averages are around six to 800, you're going to probably need more, more clients. So you have to work on your pricing. You have to work on your sales. It's all kind of, but to get seniors in, I would start with that. Um, if you're in a smaller town, you can get to go into your school, get to know some of your, the people in your school, get involved in some of the clubs, um, you know, the dance groups, the, the mm-hmm. cheerleading, the band, the sports, you can start doing sports pictures, proms, uh, proms are a great place. Cause you're already working. You don't, you want to concentrate on the juniors, obviously, cause the seniors are at that time have already had right. it, but, but getting your names out there doing sports pictures, prom pictures, um, and you just have to start. That's, that's the trick. You just have to do it. You have to not be fearful of failing and fearful of not doing a good job. You just have to start, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. Another place too, I think is like mom Facebook groups mm-hmm. Yeah, in whatever town you're moving to, even if you're not a mom, you know, you right. can, you could join and say, Hey, I'm looking for mm-hmm. five high school juniors to photograph or Absolutely. whatever. And Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Local stores are good too, like shops that yeah. maybe have um, teen type of clothing, maybe do a network with them where you do some photos of kids in their clothes. So then the shop is promoting you. The seniors are promoting you. Collaborations yep. are huge. Um, I love doing collaborations with hair, makeup artists, florists, look different locations. Like maybe yep. it's like a, um, a, a coffee shop or um you know, just a fun place that seniors hang out and, and everybody gets to, everyone gets to, to promote each other. And that's a Mm -hmm. really good way. Mm -hmm. Get to know your community and people around you and get your name out there. Yeah. Yeah. I tried once, this was back when I was in Seattle and I was, I I mean, I had, I I built my portfolio. I I did like a model call and I had eight seniors, just different, you know, variety Mm -hmm. of kids. And, and I kind of built my portfolio that way is how I started. Yeah. And then I ended up putting an ad in a magazine. It was like a, the basketball magazine and it was like a mm-hmm. big spread and I got nothing from it. Have yeah. you? Oh well, okay. my gosh. I'm sure something came of it somehow. Right. If you have everything I we could do. tell you stories but, yeah. of things that I've done like that, that have not worked out. I've done the back of Burger King receipts. I've done, <laughs> um, I've done like when you move into a neighborhood, sometimes they have like a little booklet that there's, they have a neighborhood people that will send a yep. packet to new neighbors. I've done new neighborhood yep. guides. I've done different like local magazines and publications and nothing. I mean, just nothing yeah. works as good as, as social media mm-hmm. and word of mouth and networking. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And actual contact with people. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. 100%. I was, I'm, so, I'm curious. I'm glad you had the, well, not oh, yeah. the same experience, I, yeah. but it's, I'm finding that that is the case and yeah. there's nothing better than that. Just word of mouth referral. Yeah. And, and that means sometimes that means doing free shoots and sometimes mm-hmm. that means yep, putting absolutely. yourself out there when it's scary and whatever, mm-hmm. but that is the way you're going to get yeah. the word out there. Yeah. Plus and that's the, that social media. Yeah, absolutely. And another big thing is to have a really good website that people are going to want to, to, to stay on and, um, and make sure that your SEO is up to par because yeah. a lot of people still Google search. Like I have right. on my form that seniors fill out, I ask, where do you find me? 
And I always ask people because I want to know how people are finding me. And Google search, it comes up a lot. So you have to work on your SEO on your website, whether that means, you know, figuring out how to tag your pictures and keywords and, um, and what else is good for and blogging and, and having links that bring people to your website. So like if you're on Facebook and Instagram, get them to link to your website. So more Mm -hmm. people that come Mm -hmm. to your website and when you're networking, have them link to your website, anything that will build SEO um, will help you in your, in the Google searches. So it's important to, to, to have a really good website with really your best images and, um, and that will help as well. Yeah. Yeah. I always talk about that too. Best images first. Yep. Don't Absolutely. do the same, you know, 10 photos from the same shoot. Right. Like have a, diver- right. a diverse group of teens mm-hmm. or whomever, you know, you want to photograph, but your best work needs yep. to be the first thing they see or they're just going to leave. Yep. And it's better so to I'm have 12 that. really good photos than 40 okay pictures and a lot of repeats because people are going to say, oh, she only photographed two people, you know, yep. and she's just showing the same thing over and over again. So, you know, you know, do those sessions and, and do a variety in that one session with that person. Mm-hmm. So you can have a variety to put up on your website and to post on social media and ask people yeah. to follow you. Don't be afraid to ask people to follow you on social media. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing all of this with us. Absolutely. It's, um, I feel like senior, senior photography people think can be kind of a beast, but once you get the yeah. flow and yeah. once you get the word out, it, I think it can be so lucrative and so fun. Yeah, and, absolutely. I yeah. love it. I absolutely love it. It's just, you know, some people don't love it as much just because teens can be hard on themselves, but I love it because it keeps me young and it's yeah. they're you know, they're stylish and, and we can do fun locations and, you know, it's just more one-on-one and I absolutely love it. I, I love the senior market and I love, you know, my, my women's portrait market, my fine art that I'm kind of doing. And I added a fine art line to my senior market. So, yeah. um, so that's really fun too. If, if someone wants, if they want something a little bit more stylized and fine art, um, fine art you know, as good. in, as in really styled and, and mm-hmm. things in their hair, wigs, you know, like I, I noticed that you, in your studio, you have like a bunch of different color yep. wigs and things. Yeah. And, they're yeah. floral, floral head pieces that I make. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so I have a fine art line, and, and I allow seniors to 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 add that on too. So that's kind of fun, something yeah, different. Cool. Mm-hmm. Well, one more question before we get yeah. into the the questions I always ask is, how do you handle when teens are hard on themselves in front of you when they say things? Um, well, you can't. You can't. It's it's really difficult because because they mm-hmm. really are They're just so the the way the media is and the yeah. way they are towards each other. It's just a cruel world at that age where yeah. they're just building their confidence and there's so much that, you know, tears it down. So during a session, I really work hard at building them up and making sure they feel beautiful. And, you know, the guys make them sure they feel good. Um, yeah. But it's really important that you build them up during the session and just and be authentic when you're complimenting yeah. them. Because there's always something to compliment everybody. Like, oh my gosh, you know, you look amazing in that dress and, and your smile is so beautiful. And, oh, you're doing such a great job. And, you know, and, and that kind of helps in that confidence. Confidence, but there's like years of, you know, they'll nitpick, they'll look at their pictures and they'll say, Oh, I don't like my belly and I don't like this. And, mm-hmm. and you can't deny their feelings towards it, but I just mm-hmm. keep it positive and just keep saying, Oh my gosh, you're so beautiful. And mom's there to say, you're just, you're beautiful. And obviously mother's going to love everything, you know, but yeah. generally yeah. they, they love their pictures and they know that they're hard on themselves, you know, yeah. and it's just, it's my job to help build them up. And, and I, one of my most cherished memories is um, the mom came in to place her order after their senior pictures. The daughter couldn't come with. No, actually she did come with and she was um, coming separate and the mom was there first. And she says, I have to tell you, she says, when we left the session, she says, I looked over and my daughter was crying. And she says, I'm like, Oh, she goes, Oh my gosh, what happened? She goes, she goes, that is the first time I've ever felt beautiful. And the mother was so touched. And I, I mean, when she told me this, I was like bawling my eyes out because I made her daughter feel, feel beautiful for the first time. And so, um, so that's like, that's like driven my purpose to, to, to really try to really empower these young ladies into being, you know, maybe sometimes I point out something that's unique about them that they might be 
self-conscious about. And I just mm-hmm. say how amazing it is. Like the other day I had a gal with a freckle on her lip and I'm like, Oh my God, I love that freckle. That is just so amazing. And I, and you know, and then I'm like, I hope you, and she says, I do like it, you know? And so I just point out things about them, each kid that I think is special, you know? Yeah. yeah. And maybe it's a talent they have. It doesn't always have to be about looks because right, so much is right. based around looks. It's about talent, you know, and these kids are talented and they're smart and, mm-hmm. you know, and so you know, I try to empower each one a little bit and hopefully it makes a little bit of a, of a difference in their lives in a cruel world. Yeah. 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 It's a great response for sure. Thanks. Cool. Well, okay. Now I get to ask you the questions that I ask everyone at the end of each episode. And the first one is what is something you can't live without when you're doing a photo shoot? Well, besides my camera, (laughs) I would say, um, Hmm. Yeah. Besides the obvious, I would say my little folding stool because I'm not super tall and it's, it allows me to get up taller if I need to get up to, you know, for the tall kids or I use it for the kids to sit on when they're like in the flower bushes or something, they can sit on it. It's just very multi-purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Very cool. And then how do you spend your time when you aren't working? I'm not not working. Um, <laughs> I spend it with my family. My I have two grandkids now. They're two and a half and eight months. And so oh, I, I love to, to spend some time with them every week and um, watching sports. I love I love sports. So I like watching cool. Minnesota Wild, Minnesota Twins, Minnesota Vikings. Yeah, Minnesota. I didn't know that about you. Yeah, That's I love awesome. sports. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Okay. And then what is your favorite inspirational quote? Um, I have a lot of them, but Hmm. probably my favorite one is a very simple one that, that I have up in my, in my dressing room, in my studio. And it just says live by grace, not perfection. Hmm. It's just simple. In fact, I had a a woman comment on this. She goes, Oh my gosh, I need, I love that quote. She goes, I need to do that more often. Yeah. Yeah. I like that a lot. Very cool. Okay. And then what would you tell people? I mean, I know you kind of gave advice when you're just starting out as a se- with seniors, but just overall starting in the photography business, what, what's the advice you would give? Um, my biggest advice is don't let fear stop you. Fear is huge and it will cripple you. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So you work on confidence and work on your fear and just you know, find out who you are and, and to focus on what you love to do, find your style and just, just be passionate about it and just, just do it. Just put yourself out there and don't be afraid to approach people, you know, just, yeah. Like I said before, just start, just do it. Don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. Just, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's great advice. Great advice. Yeah. Well, thank you. Where can people find you online, Annie Marie? Um, well, if you want to see my website, I'm at AnnieMariePhotography.com. On Instagram, I'm at Annie Marie Seniors and okay. Annie.Marie.Photography. And um, let's see, what else is there? Facebook, Annie Marie Photography. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. Sweet. I follow you. Well, thank you. And I, I follow love your you. work. <laughs> and I love your new um, self-portraits. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. I just posted one today. I'm thinking about yeah. doing another one that's more casual. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. I love it. I love it. I just had to do some some new ones for, um, I'm doing some speaking next spring. And so I don't, I didn't have any new updated headshots. And so I had to do some too. And so I know what that's like to do. You know, yeah. the self-portrait yeah. is, it was kind of strange, but, but I did some more creative ones for this, this round of the portrait masters too. So we'll see oh, how good. that goes. Yeah. Well, I'm okay. excited to see them. Very cool. Thank you. Thank well, you. thank you again for taking time thank to you. be with us here. I appreciate the invite. It was fun to chat with you again. Yeah, absolutely. I will see awesome. you online soon. Okay. Sounds good. Right. Bye-bye. You too. Bye. Bye.